Uh, thanks very much, everyone, for joining today. Um, I'm, I'm very excited to share with you an update and, and in the progress of our global COVID certificate network project, particularly what we have done in the past months uh, on the trust registry network. And so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Lucy Yan. I'm the project lead of GCCN at Linux Foundation Public Health. And before I introduce more, more, more speakers and our guests on, on today's uh, webinar, I'm just gonna very, very quickly go through some routine logistics you're probably already familiar with, our antitrust policy notice and code of conduct. So Linux Foundation meetings involve participation by industry competitors and it is intention of us to co conduct all of our activities in accordance with applicable antitrust and computation laws. So it is therefore extremely important that all of you are attendees adhere to meeting agendas, which we'll sh I will share shortly, and be aware of and not participate in any activities that are prohib prohibited under applicable US state, federal, or foreign antitrust and competition laws. So for any more specifics, I'm sharing a link um, in the chat so you have, um, so you, you can check out more specifics if you want, as well as a code of conduct of Linux Foundation Public Health activities. I believe, uh, you know, as to how, how we can interact professionally in, in a webinar. So, in, okay, cool. With that, me. So today we have um, a, a packed agenda for the webinar. And so I'm gonna, and I will be mainly presenting through like, sharing what, with you what we have done and appeal and what particularly the POC and provide a demo. And also I'm, I'm very excited to share with you our next steps and also future vision about what we want to do, take GCC and beyond COVID. But before we dive into like our presentation today, I would love to invite our first speaker, our executive director, Jim Sinclair, to give us a few words and also share like his vision and for the GCCN work. Jim. Thanks, Lucy. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening for everyone joining. Thank you very much uh, for joining us today. Looking forward to the discussion. I'm sure many of you by virtue of attending today have been following what we've been doing with the GCCN. And uh, one thing I would point out for everyone to notice as we go through is not only, of course, what we're doing for advancing travel, and other use cases for uh, health credentials and interoperability of those health credentials. But as we start to consider a world where uh, things like the e-identity wallet, uh, Pan-Canadian Trust Framework, uh, other means of using identity for um, authentication and authorization, uh, we're really laying the groundwork for a lot of the interoperability between those different mechanisms such as verifiable credentials and uh, X509 PKI certificates and I think you'll see some exciting work that the team has done today uh, that is starting to lay a foundation for that that I think will bear fruit not only in COVID response, um, but in these other uh, national sovereign identity initiatives that are, are beginning to be stood up and be able to, uh, to be used by citizens for different purposes. And with that, Lucy, I'll turn it back over to you and John. I'm looking forward to the presentation. Good. Thanks very much, Jim. Yes, as Jim mentioned, we're 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 having doing a lot of exploration beyond COVID work, as many of you may know, like my colleague John, who is also a speaker uh, for today's webinar, we have been focusing a lot on COVID in the past two years uh, with Linux Foundation Public Health, also our community work at the COVID Credentials Initiative, but certainly like, like Jim mentioned, this work, you know, we've learned a lot from COVID and there's a lot more that we can do by, by applying that learning. And Jim has been doing a lot of like, you know, and not only supporting us, but also exploring way beyond COVID and even like beyond public health and Linux Foundation. So we, we look forward to present to you what we have done uh, in COVID, uh, as well as you know sharing with you more uh, uh, some of like the thoughts about what we want to do beyond, as well as you know having your questions. You have any, any questions even beyond what we're doing, working on now? Please feel free and to, to interact with us during the Q and Q and A session. And also in the in the slides, I've included a contact information of both Jim and me, particularly if you're thinking about beyond COVID, you can reach out to Jim to have a conversation. So we will be sharing the slides uh, post uh, post webinar. So great. Um, yeah, and very briefly, I've, I've already, you know, probably you already know, like my colleague, John, he has been a lead in the technical development, working with our implementation partners. We also have uh, like a representative from um, 
each of the companies today, like ASAC from um, from uh, from from Huffer and, and who has been supporting us on the the, the infrastructure technology. And Savita from SimSoft, she is uh, the founder of SimSoft and who has been supporting us in developing the interface for, for, our, for, our, for our GCC and POC, as well as our friend from Thailand um, and Chat Chai, who has been helping us setting up the Verif Verifier app uh, for, for the POC. So very, very glad to have everyone on this webinar and um, looking forward to, to sharing more. Okay. Great. So I, I'm going to start a little bit with the, the context, the background of the global COVID certificate network. Some of you may already have some kind of information when we launched the, the, the network, but just make sure everyone know how we get started and where we started. So, so last year, um, uh, our community, the Linux Foundation Public Health community and, and the Working Nation has invested a lot in, in an effort called Glo a Good House Pass Interoperability Blueprint which is particularly focusing on uh, addressing interoperability challenges among all these different kinds of COVID certificate systems to help the travel, uh, tra travel industry reopen. So the outcome of the blueprint, uh, was, which was published uh, last June, was the nice set of recommendations and to address those challenges. And our community has participated and contributed a lot and learned a lot from just understanding what the challenges are and how we can work with stakeholders to, to develop technologies to tackle those issues. So at, at the end, so while we're, uh, while we're approaching the finish line of the, the, blueprint, the blueprint at Linux Foundation Public House, we, ha we were having discussions about how we as an organization that works closely with governments, with public health authorities, as well as the relevant stakeholders can take that work forward, particularly leveraging our existing connections and expertise working with governments, working with industry stakeholders, and, and particularly from our work um, like in the, in, in the uh, contact tracing app and also already some of the experience accumulated through our COVID credentials initiative. So, so, so that's and that's when we're like, okay, there's if we're an open source working nation, one of the ways of actually taking that forward is how we can turn recommendations into into open source code as well as technical specifications, and particularly helping government looking at how to implement the how to implement the software to help them reopen. So just one thing to point out, and the, uh, the Good House Pass Interoperability Blueprint focused particularly on the travel industry from a more kind of private sector point of view. So we launched Global COVID Certificate Network with a kind of additional view of how the government can leverage the set of uh, recommendations and tackle interoperability challenges among themselves. So that kind of the spirit of uh, the GCCM project. And when we launched, oh, sorry. When we launched the GCCM project, there's, there's, so we have a big grand vision of how, you know, what we want to do. And also, as many of you have seen, like the recommendations cover a wide range of, of issues and challenges. So we were, we were committed to, uh, to build software in a with the community by addressing all the challenges. So that's why we have a broad scope to, to begin with, but very, very clearly we have identified kind of three types of work we're hoping to, to, to do at the Linux Foundation Public House. The first one is the GCC and Trust Registry Network, which we, uh, we know is very, very important to, uh, to build that global trust architecture because as, and there are there are many there still are many different kind of COVID, uh, COVID certificate ecosystem out there. So how we can bring them all together so that you know the different stakeholders from different ecosystems can comfortably trust each other, and build that relationship before before they before they can uh, they can comfortably uh, verify each other's certificate, right? So that's one. One thing, one gap we see, and that's also one thing that was was being addressed in the blueprint. Another set of uh, uh, software we're hoping to build is a complete suite of toolkit that can help. So for those who don't have a COVID certificate solution yet, how to give them tools, and also those who want to kind of upgrade their existing systems to a to a very to a, uh, to 
standard conforming and also like privacy preserving systems, what are the tools we can provide them so they can build that COVID certificate ecosystems, which include a, a wide variety of tools, including governance framework, schema definitions, like, and technical specifications, implementation guide, as well as open source code. So the third uh, set of like uh, support we were hoping to provide is a building a network of vendors. I, we already you know, started by having our membership network as well as our community network for GCCN who can competently deliver, like, actually implement the software, particularly for, for our government and, and industry stakeholders. So the, uh, these three are like the initial scope. And, and at, at the point of time, knowing that we can't do everything at the same time, and we believe that by bringing existing systems together, that was the most important thing. And, and also because we see there's a lack of like technical, technical infrastructure that can support a global trust architecture that bring different, like different kind of COVID system together. So we decided to go and focus on that to begin with. So that's bring me to my next uh, topic, which is the GCCN trust registry network. So a little bit context, as I was explaining earlier. So what we are seeing, like the issues, what the challenges, like still today we still have it, is there are so many different kind of COVID ecosystems, COVID certificate ecosystem out there, and there's no established trust chains. What I mean by trust chain is we can use example of of passport with e-passport. So when we're talking about issuing of passport, there are particular, there are very very clear kind of authorities in each country and also very, uh, very, very clear thought and like who, who is the IKL, they, they have a standard, very, very clear standard, how the countries can follow the particular standard to issue like e-passport. And in each country, there's very clear authority who is giving different institutions, uh, agencies authority to issue passport to citizens. Like the trust chain is very, very clear who is in charge of what. And, but in COVID situation, there's no established trust chains and government have been mainly involved and in like vaccine, vaccine sort of, you know, giving back vaccine administration, but not, not necessarily so with test results and tests. So there is a very, a very, the COVID certificate space has been very, very fragmented. A lot of parties, a lot of stakeholders are, are giving, are issuing COVID certificate. It could, could be private sector, it could be public sector. So without established trust chains, how the different kind of silo systems can actually work together, how a, a verifier, right? How a border control officer can know who they can trust, the whose certificate they can trust to accept. So that's that is one like very, very big issue. Another issue is very, very relevant to the, uh, the first point is there's different kind of a different kind of uh, COVID certificate standard and policies out there. Right, you, uh, we, we wrote an article last year that introduced like the four major standards and, and out there, uh, which include like the EU, the EU DCC, and there and also the ICAO, uh, ICAO ex COVID certificate and DIVOC, which it was developed in India and implemented in multiple developing countries, uh, as well as a like, smart house card was is a very very popular in North America. But right, with these dominant standards, how how we can and also some of the uh, some of the standards are not are also uh, came with a very clear policies and regulations, for example, in the EU, right? How the people who are adopting different standards can actually recognize and can know what how others are doing credentials can recognize each other's credentials and 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 bring people using different standards into their own countries, right? That's a big question mark. And, 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 and the last two points are mainly, you know, here we're trying to address the, the inequality because there are, there are gaps. There are gaps in terms of like how countries, the, space, the pace, the countries adopting COVID standards and also building their infrastructure and different kind of level of the existing infrastructure. So having this kind of fragmentation and, and divergence also create inequalities, particularly causing some issues for, for developing countries who want, also want to open up fast and bring, start bringing like a business and a tourists into their countries. So with all those contexts in mind, we you know, make us more believe more so that we need a global trust architecture to bring all these systems like centralized system together. 
So the way that we look at GCC and trust registry network, we know it's a very it's a new concept and also it takes a new approach and our uh, technology. So what we do is we, we want to start it with a very simple definition, very, very clearly what we want to, to do at the beginning. So the, the way we define GCC and trust registry network is an online resource that provide both human and machine readable information pertaining to each of this entry, which we will show very shortly through our demo. Uh, and, and each network participant, which we mean either you're participating as an entry or you're leveraging our network for verifications, it could be public or private sector entities who are issuing or verifying digital or digi digitized paper COVID certificates, collectively we call them COVID certificate issuers, and so, and so those certificates were, will be required for use by jurisdictions and, and entities, either public and private entities to allow free and safe movement within and across borders. So, so the GCC and Trust Registry Network, so we support like the vetted metadata, which will show like what the metadata uh, are in, in, in shortly and providing definition of each, each entry and the complete life cycle. So we provide like the, from like service inception to deprecation for all like the trust service providers, which we mean like all the participating entries on our network and that providing a trust service, as well as uh, a service inception to deprecation of all like the trust service verifiers who register to use our service part, uh, and using like our network for verifications. So what, to provide more clarity, so we, we have listed like the targeted functionalities um, we're, we're working on right now. So very, very, very simply and very clearly, there's three things we're trying to do. So uh, we're, we're, we're trying to allow all like the, uh, uh, to, pr uh, to build a multi-stakeholder network where all like the COVID certificate verifiers, if you want to verify COVID certificate, you can come to our network and first find who, who is issuing COVID certificate. And second, once you found found like the, the who are issuing, you can look at their policies, what how the you know different policies, different kind of trust uh, uh, trust frameworks of different issuers, and decide based on the policies who you want to trust, like who you whose certificate you want to accept, and and lastly, and build based on like your your reviewing of the, all the issuers and the policies, and you build you can build a customized list. For your country or for your for for your company, uh, of like the issuers you trust, and so that you have their you have their list of public keys plus the metadata information accessible to whoever using your verifier app. So you can see a a, a kind of simple a graphic on on the right of the slides, which show like a GCC network. We have all the different entries, and as a verifier, you can explore it. And then decide, and, and so you can take build a customized list that can be used by the verifier app. And to to be very clear, what what kind of the value um, we want to provide, especially you know given there are already existing of uh, ecosystem who are also doing already doing some kind of like a trust management. So the clear value proposition of of the GCC and trust registry network, first and foremost, is we want to provide higher quality vetted information of trust service providers, which means every entry on our network, as opposed to only their public key information, which has been a common practice of existing systems. So I provide an example of like uh, a kind of what some example of what, uh, one of the existing systems, how there are, um, how, how what metadata they, they are exposing, and also what kind of metadata they're collecting. So it's very, very simple metadata. It's really, really hard for a verifier to just base on this information to decide, okay, should I, you know, I, I know this work nation, should I trust this work nation or not? So this, this is one kind of like one thing, like we, we, we are beating kind of particularly to address, um, to provide more and higher quality vetted, vetted information metadata of an issuer or of a trust, uh, trust ecosystem. Second is, so we want to provide a root of trust agnostic Technology and, and and management infrastructure. So whether what kind whether what kind of um, a existing root of trust architecture. By root of trust, I mean 
So when you're issuing credentials, they're always like the root like organization that who you're going to trust. And there are different kind of architecture, standardized way of building a root, like your trust chains, right? Like in, in, in the IKL situation, the passport situation, right? There's a root of trust in each country, right? And a working nation assigned by the government who can actually authorize different agencies to issue passport. Right? And they're using a particular technology, which many of you may know, the X509 PKI infrastructure, infrastructure has been quite popular. Pre pre predominant as one of the uh, uh, root of trust architecture. So the idea for GCC, and we know that there are different ways of providing root of trust. And so we want to be root of trust agnostic. So no matter you're, if you're using an X509 PKI system, or if you're already using a decentralized system like using verifiable credentials and decentralized identifiers, we can include you both in, in our network. So lastly, and publish trust. We want we want to make sure our our system, like our network, can publish trust services definition based on ex existing accepted standards. So we're not you know reinventing a new way of publishing trust service definitions. So one of the examples that we can provide here is like the the SC standard, which uh, and as some of you may know, SC is an EU standard organization that focus on ICT uh, standards related to ICT system and services. So this and it, and they has it has been implement, implemented at EIDAS 1.0 by the EU, European Union. So this is one of examples of what we mean like existing standards. And so we want to make sure that you know all like our trust service definitions are following these major standards, and so that the participants are familiar with them and also not you know and we're not creating anything new. So with this, so I. So this is where I, I want to um, uh, mention like uh, our the underlying technology, wh which enable us to, to provide the target functionalities as well as deliver our value proposition, and which is the trust uh, management infrastructure. And, and then like from uh, ASEC from uh, Fraunhofer has been helping us because their company developed this this infrastructure at the European self-sovereign identity uh, framework lab and, and ASIC has been supporting us to leveraging this technology and to build GCCN trust registry network on top of it. So I'm not going to go into the details of like of all the um, all the features of train, but as you can see, all like the features, like the highlighted features we have listed here are meeting exactly what we're looking for for GCCN. And one thing I would love to point out is like, can use DNS like the domain names and system security extensions to secure the chain of authority for trust service providers. So this is also very important existing infrastructure train is leveraging, which means we are leveraging through our network. So in so, uh, so all the countries, you know, governments who are, you know, they all have, and they, they are familiar with, because everyone is using a DNS so that's that's one thing like I want to highlight here. And, and lastly, and the provide an API for discovery and verification of trust endpoint is something another thing I want to highlight the reason why. So we can allow verifier apps to leverage our system is uh, the train uh, architecture already um, provided an API and that allow us to kind uh, to to build in that service the verification services into GCC and trust registry network. So this is a very, very high level uh, architecture, a uh, logical architecture of train, which also the log logical architecture for uh, GCC and trust registry network. So a few kind of key definitions I'm gonna quickly go through. And if you have any questions, please feel free to use either the chat function or the Q and A function. My colleague, John is here. He can answer more kind of technical questions and at the, at the last uh, part of the, the presentation. So here, so you, uh, probably you, uh, you, hear, you heard me saying, you know, the word trust policy, you know, governments for, uh, gov governance frameworks. So here we call it like trust schemes, like in, in, the, in, the, in, in, our, in our system, we call it trust schemes, which means the all like the, the, the trust relevant attributes about enrolled entities, about an issuer in a, in a, in a trust scheme. So that's, that's pretty much the, the trust policies and, and that work nation where a consortium defines. So based on the trust scheme, that a trust scheme pu publication authority 
will publish that through the GCC and Trust Registry Network. So they, there's, so they can be an entry on the, on the network. So the, the, so the trust scheme, the TSPA, we, um, in a, abbreviation here, higher level is the higher level components, pretty much like the, the entry, you will see each entry on GCCN that can publish different trust schemes, different trust policies and how, of how they govern, how they enroll their own COVID certificate issuers. So service, a trust service provider. So the, the, the trust, uh, the trust scheme publication authority, once they get listed as an entry on GCC, and we call them a trust service provider because they're providing a trust services on our network. So any participating entity as an entry on our network that provide a service defined by a TSPA is a trust service provider. And anyone like mentioned earlier, enrolled in our network have, you know, can, that can use our service, using our service for ver verifications, we call them trust service verifiers. And, and within the train uh, uh, system, there's an, an automated trust verifier we call ATV, which is the verification of trust scheme and service endpoint according to self-defined policies, API for trust service verifiers. So I think one thing that I want to highlight here, so each, uh, a TSPA on a network, and they can pop, they can uh, define their own trust schemes. So they don't have to kind of follow any other people's trust schemes. If they, if they they can define their own and come in as a TSPA, and and then they can provide like the trust service on a network for verifiers, like to verify, to verifiers to first to look at their policies and decide if they're gonna trust or not. And the ultimate trust verifier is pretty much like the, the verification engine that a verifier can, uh, can leverage uh, through our network to, to verify a certificate coming from a trust service provider on the network. So lastly, the trust scheme pointer is pretty much, like, so each one of them has a DNS host name, right? So to the, it is the DNS host name of the claimed trust scheme. So hopefully I'm, I'm providing a simple enough a definition of how, how the trust architecture, architecture works and the different kind of players and the key, key kind of functionalities, key terms of, in, in the system. So if any questions, we would love to answer that in, in our Q&A session. Okay, cool. Here comes the, the exciting point and where we're gonna show all, uh, of, uh, our a demo. So before we get into the demo, I want to acknowledge our partners again, and who help us, you know, putting together um, our technology and also supporting us and with this uh, webinar, the POC and the demo. And the POC composed of mainly two parts. The first is networking, uh, network onboarding for trust service providers. So the second part is for the verifiers, like the discovery, how the, the verifiers can discover and use uh, the GCC network for verification. So we haven't built every functionality into um, into the POC, which we'll explain later what will be part of the POC, what will not, will be not. The next session. So the first uh, uh, demo we're gonna do is the network onboarding for trust service providers. So as you can see on the slide, so there are kind of two parts we're gonna demo. So we're gonna start with how uh, a trust service provider can apply uh, through our network. I can apply to become a, an entry on a network. And so once they apply through our, our web interface, we will receive the information and the network operator, whoever is operating GCCN, like, um, will be doing offline vetting process to make sure the this trust service provider is, provi is providing, is, is, who they, is who they claim they are, as well as providing a legit and valid information of themselves and, and their, their service. And once like the vetting is done offline, we'll prove them so they will officially become uh, an entry on the network. And that that's like the, like the published, the, the trust service provider and it will be published, their entry will be published on GCCN with um, certain information in public that every verifier or everyone can see. So, so the offline process we won't be able to show, but we are able to give you an idea how, uh, how a trust provider can apply and also what will look like once they get published. So let me, sh let me do a new share screen. Okay. First, 
pictures. Can everyone see my sharing screen? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Sorry. Somehow shows in my network. Just give me a second. Okay, I think we're good now. Uh, Are we good now? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. So um, just for, for transparency, we have recorded this session and just to make sure there's no, no more technical issues. So I, I'm gonna narrow it through like the, 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 uh, the demo so you know what was happening. So what you're looking at now is like the, the homepage of, of, of what we, we have for now, just to introducing the GCC and Trust Registry Network. And as you can see, if you want to submit a network entry, so there is a submit network entry button. Once you click into it, you will be able to see what, what information you will be asked to, to provide. So in, in because for, for time, because of time limitation, we have already pre-filled when we were recording. So to give an idea what kind of information we are providing. And there, as you can see on the top of uh, like the network some entry submission, there are three, uh, uh, four categories of information we'll be asking for. So the participating entry information, so like entity, what the entity, the information of your entity. And what you're looking at now is if whoever is submitting the contact, the submitter, will also be asking for your information. And the third category of information we're asking for is the service information. Like what are like the kind of the metadata of your, the service, the trust service you're providing. And, and lastly, the service operation, operational contact. So whoever is operating the trust service, right? You also need to provide the contact information of them. So just for, for your information. So all this um, a definition of an entry is what we have defined was like the input of the LPH community as well as the stakeholders we're working with. So this is not like, like the final, final version. So we're still, that's what we're hoping to do next. But this is also based on, on some existing, for example, we work uh, with the Ministry of uh, Health from the Netherlands on, 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 on pretty verifying if these in, in information are looked you know, our valid information to ask for. So we have done some valid, valid in the feedback and from our communities and stakeholders, but this is not certainly not like in the, the defined version for what operations will look like. So, so what we're, you're looking at now is we've already submitted an entry. And once you su successfully submit it, you will see like oh, uh, that your data has been submitted um, because we need to do offline verification. So you won't be able to see right away what's gonna happen, what like your entry showing up on our network. But what will happen after you submit is what you're looking at now is an XML document that's being created. So at the, at the back end, so our team, like our administration team, uh, will receive like the backend, like this information that has been submitted. So that's when, and we haven't built any kind of back, uh, the, the kind of administrative uh, an interface, but this information we will already be able to receive now. And then the team will be able, the operator will be able to do offline verification, uh, uh, providing based on the information that has been submitted. So as you can see, so this is a lot more information than what you're seeing in like an example I provided earlier about like just one like or two kind of a piece of information. Now we're now what you're looking you'd be looking at is because we we're not able to just 
just proved entry right away. But once an entry is improved, what you're looking at now is a list of entries. Uh, and, and the Netherlands, the Ministry of Netherlands entry is pretty much what we just submitted. So once it gets approved from, from like uh, by the operator, so this, the, the page you're looking at is the information that will show up in public that everyone can see, that a verifier can see. So it includes a lot of links that will point you to more information about this particular issuer or this particular trust service provider. So for, for a verifier, they can decide if this is like a trustworthy, a, a trustworthy service provider they want to add to their, uh, to, to their trust list. So this is like the first um, demo. Let me go back to, to our slides. Okay. The second demo we're gonna do. So for so before we get to the second demo, I just wanted to kind of point highlight again like the metadata comparison. So on the left, you're looking at like a screenshot of, um, of like partially what we have collected like through in, in the XML document and plus um, like the, the actual information we're gonna show to the public. So what uh, about a particular trust service provider? So on the right, so we use an example from VCI, I guess some of you probably already familiar. So what the information they have about uh, issuers and, and, and to the public. So you're looking at a minimal um, of, of meta information. So ma mainly most organizations that only provide um, like their, their public key and also the issuer issuer type, the link to their public key. So, so there are, we have heard a lot of like kind of comments and feedback on, it's hard for verifiers to know how the issuers, right? Can, you know, who, who is trustworthy, who is not with little information. So that's, that's one, I think it's, it's to a certain extent, it's probably fine if you belong to part of an ecosystem. For example, if you're part of the EU system, like when the EU is approving who can participate in their ecosystem, they're already doing a verification and vetting offline. So, so once you're part of that, it's, it's easier for you just, okay, we don't have to know a lot about a, an, a, another party in the same ecosystem. But when you, we were talking about a different ecosystem right, who are following different rules to verify each other's credentials or certificates, it's important that you understand more so you can build trust first before, before you just decide you're gonna accept the credential or not. So that's kind of like the meta information, like more meta information we're hoping to provide. And now, now that we're bringing all different kind of ecosystems onto the GCC and Trust Registry Network. So the second demo we're gonna do is the discovery and use um, for trust service providers, how they can use trust service, uh, our, our, our network to, for verification. So we're, we're gonna, um, do, do a very, very simple kind of a how the trust, trust service discovery. And, and, and second, what was out of scope is we haven't built the functionality of, of for a verifier to build a trust list. And, but we are able to show how an existing verifier app uh, can, uh, by using GCC network at the back end, can identify if an issuer is a trust insurer and fetching public key for a verification. So. Quickly, let me show back. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Okay, great. Just very, very quickly going back to uh, going back to the network entry screen. So the way you're doing an exploration and discovery on our network is by using the search function on the network entries. So as a verifier, so you so we haven't provided logging yet, but but it's the similar ideas once a verifier is using our service. You, can, you will be able to see the entire list of all like the verifiers, all the trust service providers we have on a network. And by using the search function, and we'll be adding more kind of like criteria event search to help you search who you want, you know, what kind of criteria you want to apply 
to a trust service provider. So that's how you will be able to use our network, like our web interface, where your, your account as a verifier to discover who are the issuers, who are the trust service providers on that network. network. And, and also using a key at words to see who are, to find them a lot faster. So I won't be showing like the, because there are only three, three entries, but to give you an idea how you can use the, the network to do, for discovery. So once you've done that and you can use, we're also building in, we'll build in like the trust list building functionality through our web interface. So assuming that you already have a trust list, now what we're gonna show is how you can use um, the verifier app to, val to verify a certificate. I believe you're looking at, are we good? We're looking at the screen? Yes. Okay, great. So what you're looking at now is the verifier. It's, you know, Border Control Officer opens a verifier app and they can get started. So what you're looking at now is the, the each whoever a verif a verifying a border control officer or a restaurant um, person a service person at the door so they will see the trust list is updated so they have like all like the trust they know that like um whoever are kind of managing their their verification services have already updated the trust list which is now um from the gcc network so the verifier app can, verifier can comfortably use the app knowing that all the trust issuers are there and then they can scan the QR code of incoming certificate. Okay. So what happened when, when a verifier scanning a QR code is the first, um, and they and the QR code, so the scanner needs to decode the QR code. So that's the part that is not related to GCCN. So the verifier has need to have building capabilities to identify the different types of QR code. There are not many out there because the QR code are pretty standardized. So once they decode it, they will be able to find out um, who is the who is the issuer. So they will use the issuer information and search the list, the trust list they have on the Verify app that builds through GCC and Trust Registry Network to see if this income, the, the certificate is issued by a trusted issuer or not. So in this scenario, you're looking at the trust issuer is found from the trust list. And then once that the trust issuer is found, and the Verify app will use the public key that they from the trust list to actually decrypt the QR code, to decrypt the data, so they can get the data from, from the certificate and then compare the data with, the, with their entry rules to see if someone is, is meeting the entry rules. So in this scenario, it's like the trust issuer found and, and, and also uh, it matched with the entry, uh, entry requirements. So you get a, you get a certificate verified um, sign. So another example I'm gonna quickly show is what happened if you if the issuer is not found? Okay, so let's do this. So you open the app, you will get started, making sure the trust list is updated. Then you can scan the incoming certificate. And in this scenario, once the QR code is decoded, like there's no information about the issuers found on the trust list. So the verification failed. So that's what, uh, what happened if, if, you're, if you're not a trusted issuer on the trust list. So with this, so we have, so in the document we're gonna share with your post webinar, we have listed, cause all the work has been taken place in public. So we have all the information in public for you to check out. So we will share this information in the slides so you can look at more our web interface and also like our, our, our uh, XML examples. And also, uh, uh, also we have included, oh, there's a tuple, like our GitHub link. So we'll be adding more code as we're working with partners to move code into our GitHub repo. You'll have more code and, um, to look at down the road. So lastly, the next steps and future vision 
as Jim already mentioned quite a bit of it. So I, I'm going to talk about some specifics. So from from April, like now and onwards, pretty much like these few months, our 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 focus has been on finding collaboration, find, finding partners to fund real work pilots of the GCC and Trust Retreat Network. So we're having very good conversations with some UN agencies and also having exploratory, exploratory conversations with, with the WHO and see how we can support them to bring all this different kind of COVID ecosystem together. And as well, I'm looking beyond COVID, how just in, in general, by uh, building a, a global trust architecture and down the road, how we can support all the other kind of house, public house scenarios. And our current kind of priorities for the pilots, for the world work pilots are first network governance and operations. So currently uh, LPH is playing the role of um, building the technology while bringing partners who can actually do governance operations. So we're not like, we're certainly not in the position of governing a network as such, especially by ourselves. And second of all, a, a inclusion of key stakeholders, influencers is and, you know, by working with like UN agencies, you know, working with like countries and the key private partner, a private uh, sector partners. So that's kind of like influencers who already been building, it you know, has a lot of expertise in this area. And lastly, all the work we're doing and we want to standardize it. So we're not only, you know, we're providing the world a tool, right? A, a, a flexible tool that they can use and for, for, for COVID and for COVID and beyond. And, and also the scaling of core components. Where you're looking at now is the basic functionalities and the still certain things we haven't built. So by doing a, a, the pilots, we hope to build more like the core functionalities into the existing network. And from, from this year and like 2020, 2023, as you can see, like Jim has already been working actively on seeking interest and implementations outside of COVID. So because this trust architecture can be used very, very broadly to handle all kinds of trust management situations among different kinds of credential systems by bringing different kinds of centralized systems together. So, so if you have any ideas, please feel free to reach out to us. So I have listed like how to get involved and also how you can reach out to Jim on like different up, you know, thoughts you have like beyond COVID and, you, and as well as COVID. And if you have any particular questions about the project, you know, I have also my contact information there. Thanks very much. I think I'm I'm using more time than expected, but hopefully, you know, we have uh, some time for questions. That's right. Never apologize for greatness, Lucy. Thank you very much. Excellent overview. Um, doesn't appear we have any questions in the chat at the moment, but we do have a couple more minutes before we conclude our, uh, our webinar. So if you have any questions and would like to throw them into the Q&A or the chat, now is the time to do so. I, again, just want to reiterate my thanks to Lucy, John, and the entire team for the presentation today. And very excited about the potential that we're putting together, not only around COVID uh, credentials, but as we've mentioned uh, extensively about other applications for credentials and credential exchange for the future going forward. And I'll pause for a second just to give a chance for anyone to feverishly hop on the keyboard, chat if they've got any questions. Looks like we've covered all salient points with your, your excellent overview, Lucy, and uh, don't think we have any additional questions for today. Oh, that's... Thanks, Peter. Appreciate the feedback. Great. And uh, without further ado, then, if there aren't any additional questions, uh, this recording will be, or excuse me, this webinar will be available as a recording. Uh, you are welcome to follow up with us, and uh, if you have not uh, joined LF Public Health and would like to look into doing so, uh, we certainly appreciate uh, your participation. With that, I wish everyone a great rest of your day, whatever time zone you're in, and look forward to following up with you in the future with more developments uh, as we roll along. Thank you very much for attending.